guys, they were taking a look at a network switch. So this particular one is from Netgear and it's the GS316. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So this is a 16 port gigabit ethernet unmanaged switch. So there's two types of switches you can get. You can get a managed and unmanaged. The key difference between the two is the managed one. You can actually configure the ports that are here on the switch. With the unmanaged one, you can't configure this and there's nothing in addition to do. So this is actually ideal for a basic home user who doesn't need to do anything more advanced than just have additional ports. Now, the reason to purchase one of these is if you're running out of ports on your existing router and you wanted additional ports to enable you to hardwire more devices, so this is the ideal solution to go for. So the thing to first be aware of is that even though it says 16 ports, one has to be used to connect to your router and then you'll have 15 available. So very useful to have if you've got a lot of hubs, you've got a server, etc., or maybe you wanted to hardwire as many different devices like your TV, your PlayStation, Xbox, etc., then perfect to get one of these. So let's open it up and have a look at what you get in the packaging. In the packaging, you get an installation guide and device safety document. You get two screws, two raw plugs for wall mounting, and then you've got some rubber pads to put underneath it if you're just gonna put it on the table. You get a power adapter, length of the cable is 176 centimeters, DC connector on there, and output is 12 volts, one amp. And finally, coming onto the network switch, dimensions wise, it comes in at 28 and a half centimeters wide, depth is 10 centimeters, and the thickness is two and a half centimeters. Build quality feels good, metal casing all the way around on this. You can see their branding along the top, vents on this side, more vents on the other side, power inputs here at the back, Kensington locking point and an earthing point. The four pads that you get in the packaging can be used on the points there just to avoid it slipping on the surface and you've got the screw points for wall mounting this. And just bringing a screwdriver in just to show it's movable. The wall mounting works like so, so you screw in obviously the screw and then once you place this in position it just locks in and it's not direction dependent, obviously that's why they put the slots in multiple directions and with the table mount side of things the pads just literally take them off, sticky pad underneath it, just stick it straight on. And there you have it, the four pads are on. You've got a power indicator here, speed indications given there. And when you've got a link with a device, it's blinking away. So you'll know straight away it's connected. To use it, like I said, one port has to be occupied and you need to connect it to your router. And you can use any one of these ports. It's not a single dedicated one for this. Now, taking a look at my router, we come around the back. You can see I've got one port available. So if I plug this ethernet cable in, there you go, that cable's in now. Now the other end of the wire that I connected to my router is just here and I can just plug it into any port on the switch. Now let's power it on. So I've got my power strip over here. Everything's plugged into it. Got all my devices around here. So I've got a wireless access point there and two hubs plus my two NAS servers here. Power's come on, you've got the indicator there, and then link lights on here as well. As both the lights are flashing, you know you've got a gigabit ethernet connection here. So now it's just a matter of just plugging in your cables for all your hardwired devices, and really that's it. Just confirm the link lights flashing, and you know you've got a connection there. So I'm using just four additional ports here, but I've got some other devices I need to connect into here, which I'll connect up at a later stage, but just gives you an idea what's involved in this just power on my NAS server as well and there we have it that's all that's involved in getting one of these things set up so no real effort all you've got to do really is get a connection from your router going onto the device and then you can just plug in all your other devices useful to have obviously more stable than having wi-fi if you've got a wired connection you've got increased stability with that so anything you can hardwire do it that's the best way forward so there you go i hope it's helped anyone thinking of expanding their wired network very useful thing to buy i'll include details for the device in the description below including purchasing links so thanks for viewing and see you in the next one